episode. Tonight's episode is really special because he is a fellow entrepreneur. He's written a couple cookbooks and you know, I love to cook. And so having him here is a real treat for me. I can't wait to talk to him tonight. Bring together a fellow entrepreneur, a caterer, and a cookbook author. Chef Anthony from right here in the Washington metro area is going to be with us, and I can't wait to see what he does with all of this. Come right back and we'll get started. Welcome back to Love Dish. I'm Kate Lewis, and just like I promised, I have Chef Anthony here. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Well, thanks thank for you. Me. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs> so generally, this is a time when I would give you an apron, mm -hmm. but you are like a real chef with your chef coat. You came yeah. fully prepared, Absolutely. so there's no need for me to give you my little piddly apron today. Oh, no. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. So we're so we're gonna be just fine. But I, I just want to say, like, first of all, I'm really excited to have you on tonight. You're an entrepreneur, fellow entrepreneur, a chef, an author. So that's right up my alley. So we're going to have a good time talking about Absolutely. all that stuff and more. And tell us real quick what you plan on cooking tonight. So what I'm going to make today is Cajun shrimp and grits. Ooh, Cajun shrimp and grits. Everything inside of me just jumped and quivered mm. and all. Ooh, I can't. I love to Louisiana eat. Louisiana inspired. Oh, 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 and I'm gonna tell you why I love that even more a little mm -hmm. later. And we're gonna be right back. Keep watching Love Dish because we're gonna get started with this Cajun shrimp and grits with Chef Anthony. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Love Dish. I'm K.S. Lewis with Chef Anthony. I'm excited. I know I'm, I'm like, Chef Anthony, I'm cheesing big and hard, but I'm excited. So, you're an entrepreneur. Yes. You're a caterer. I am. You're a cookbook author. Talk a little bit about, how, first of all, where do you have the time? How do you have the time to do all that? You know, <laughs> I just try to make it all work. Okay. I try to fit it into my schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. It seems to work. It's working. Yeah. It's working for you. Mm -hmm. But what drove you to begin your journey in entrepreneurship? Because that's like, you have to be a certain type of person to even have that just oomph about you to even want to do it. Because it's a lot. It takes a lot. So what drove you to that place? You know, just knowing that I can control the amount of money I make okay. by providing a service mm -hmm. to people, mm -hmm. you know, cooking. I said, you know, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Right. So being able to structure everything, you know, how much I paid for groceries to how much I charge mm -hmm. people for certain meals, you know, and then being able to prepare these meals the way that people actually want them, you know, to me, I, I get a rush out of that. Yeah, yeah, I love that. How did you even, like, how did cooking become your passion? Because I'm, I'm assuming that you're passionate about it. Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in the house with cooks. My okay. mom cooked every night, my dad cooked. You know, and they alternate the nights. So, um, 
with my dad. His favorite specialty was uh, spaghetti. My mom, she yeah. loved fish. You know, just being able to see this and different herbs and spices that they okay. use, I said, you know, when I had to move out on my own, mm -hmm. I got to cook for myself. Right. You know, and then I began studying and I realized, you know, as a single man at that time, mm -hmm. you know, I would invite friends over, women over, and I would cook different things. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. Okay. So then I started pursuing it even more and studying even more, mm -hmm. you know, watching Food Network and reading recipe books and looking yeah. up stuff online. So I just took and ran with it. Now, did you, now you, <clears> you <throat> mentioned cooking for your friends and cooking mm -hmm. for women. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, because you know, I, I talk love and relationships. Yeah. What was your favorite, like, recipe or favorite dish to cook for for the the miss the miss right then because i know you're married at mm -hmm. this point yeah. so now you have a miss right yeah but at the time yeah what was your favorite dish to cook for ladies in your life when they would come over so back then as crazy as it sounds you know i would cook breakfast oh so okay he would cook breakfast so you know. <laughs> breakfast for dinner Bre i'm assuming breakfast for dinner okay so i would <laughs> So I would make them my roasted potatoes, and that recipe has not changed since, to, this, to day. this day. Roasted potatoes, mm -hmm. you know, red potatoes, of course. Mm -hmm. um, that between bell peppers and onions. Okay. Um, of course, shrimp and grits. Sounds good. Um, I would always make my own mimosas. Oh. Back then, the mimosas that I serve to people now mm -hmm. are the exact same as they were then, which is orange juice. Uh -huh. Moscato, mm -hmm. champagne, and red grenadine. Oh, okay. The Moscato so makes it the... even sweeter. Right. I like the sound of that. Now I'm allergic <clears throat> to orange juice, so mm -hmm. I would have to have pineapple or cranberry That's or something nice like that. But but yeah, I like the sound mm -hmm. of that. And I like the added touch of the grenadine and mm -hmm. Yeah, that yeah. sounds nice. Okay. But tonight, so tonight I feel really special because you're making the shrimp and grits for me. For sure. So tell us a little bit about what the ingredients are and, and just, we'll, we'll get into the actual method, but tell us a little bit about what's, what goes into this dish. Mm -hmm. So what goes into this dish is Argentina shrimp. Okay. And I like to use Argentina shrimp because one thing about it, when you cook it, it remains salt. Okay. There's nothing worse than having that tire, mm. real tough mm -hmm. shrimp. So, Argentina shrimp, peeled de vein, bell peppers and onions, mm -hmm. which will be in the Cajun uh, sauce. Okay. So, um, we also have the grits, you have the olive oil, mm -hmm. Worcestershire sauce, um, and other Cajun spices. Right. Okay. Parmesan Ooh. cheese, you know, and scallions for, you know, the cool on top. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to get moving on this dish okay. because I, my stomach is letting me know it's getting about that time. So. Make sure that you come right back because we're going to get started with the Cajun Shrimp and Grits in just a minute. Hi everyone, I am Mr. Brian Lamont. I am a wardrobe stylist, personal shopper, and media personality. You can find me at almost every single fashion, networking, or entertainment event that you can name. Catch me on all social media platforms at Mr. Brian Lamont. Until next time, peace. Welcome back to Love Dish. I'm KS Lewis, and tonight I have Chef Anthony with me. And we have been talking a little bit about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You're going to make shrimp and grits. But mo I wanted to mention before we kind of get started with this, mm -hmm. So you really promote healthy eating, I do. right? And so I wanted to, to ask like, what prompted your love for healthy eating? So that's a good question. When I was 19 years old, mm -hmm. I got diagnosed with an ulterior venous malformation. Wow. Probably never heard of that before. Never. But I was eating very unhealthy. Okay. They had to, if you see this incision, mm -hmm. they had to go inside my head and clip this blood vessel. Wow. And it came from eating high sodium food. Well, it triggered it. Mm -hmm. And they triggered it early. So with that, I knew that I had to get myself back together and stop eating so recklessly. Mm -hmm. You know, so at that point in time, it's, and this is before I started cooking wow. on my own. So I took that into consideration mm -hmm. and I started watching everything I ate. I um, began to use a lot more vegetables in my diet. Okay. A lot less meat in my diet, you know, unless I'm cooking for other people. Mm -hmm. So taking that into consideration definitely uh, opened up my eyes to, you know, 
health and awareness. Wow, mm-hmm. that's amazing. And thank goodness they caught it early, Absolutely. you know, so that you could correct some things within your own diet sure. and, and really use it as a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And so does it really kind of prompt how you approach cooking? Oh yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. So, you know, certain things I may or may not use, like I utilize butter mm-hmm. for some yeah. things, okay. but you know, if I can avoid it, I'll definitely use olive oil okay. in my different menu items, mm-hmm. so. And how do you kind of help, you know, your clients and do you do you infuse that in the cooking that you do for other people? I do. I kind of coach them and guide them in the direction. I have an individual who actually beat diabetes wow. from my meal plan because they took and eliminated meat out of their diet and had more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. And with those things within 10 weeks, they weren't even taking medication for diabetes. Man, that is more, awesome. You know. And it's amazing that food is actually a medication. Tell me a little bit about how, what types of dishes can you make that are sexy but still healthy? So, utilizing a lot of fish. Okay. Fish is very lean and very high in protein. Mm. That's one of those go-to. So you got cod, you have, um, of course, shrimp, you have salmon. All things that I love. If you want to go for the expensive ones, you go for some raw fish, steelhead trout. You know, things oh. like that, you know, okay. with them being light and flaky, you know, you get all that protein that you need for your daily intake. So. Oh, I love the sound mm-hmm. of that. And see, I think from my standpoint, you and I are thinking like totally different things when it comes to like staying sexy, healthy eating, but talk a little bit about like how it looks on the plate. Like, cause I know for you, sexy is probably like the presentation mm-hmm. as opposed Absolutely. to for me, I'm thinking very different. So if it doesn't look good on the plate, I can't give it to you. Right, because that entices, oh, you it know, does. it entices the person that you're with to mm-hmm. eat it. So when I put it on the plate, if you don't want to take a picture of it, mm. then I don't want to give it to you. That's the way I, that's my idea. I like that, I like if that. If I give it to you, I want you to look at it and say, I gotta get a picture of this mm-hmm. before I digest it. Yeah, so. I like the sound of that. Presentation is everything. It is. And then taste comes right after. Yeah, right after. Okay. You know, they kind of running neck and neck right there. Right, so. right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to get started then because okay. I can't wait to see the presentation and taste it. Oh, I'm ready. All right. Let's do this. So we're going to take a quick break and we're going to start sizzling up this shrimp. We'll be right back on Love Dish. For the novelty. Welcome back to Love Dish. We have been moving and grooving in this kitchen. We've been making it happen. But I wanted to hear a little bit more about your catering days because I know you have some very interesting stories to tell. Mm-hmm. And particularly because you're a private chef too. So you do a, you do a lot of, of things for different people. So tell us what, what has been your most interesting experience as a private chef. And I think that this one probably would spook anybody out. Uh-oh. So, anniversary dinner okay four-year marriage and I came to the house mm-hmm. and I prepared the food and the husband was out at happy hour mm-hmm. he comes home she's like oh he's here so she meets him at the front door and he, you could hear him talking mm-hmm. and the only thing I heard him say was it smell good in here and then when I turned around and looked at him he was like this Said, they almost turned into a said, bad situation. Doing, it could have. <laughs> you know, for the simple fact that, you know, you see another man in your house while right. no one else is home. Mm-hmm. No kids, no nothing. Mm-hmm. And what put him at ease was when I said, hey, brother, how you doing? My name's Ann. Don't worry about it. I said, I'm a married man. <laughs> and and so you can see his whole face Everything drop. changed. And I left out one part. Mm-hmm. He said to his wife, uh-huh. let me talk to you for a second. And they walked off. I was like, this might not be good. <laughs> so I guess she explained to him. Right. He's married. And, you know, it worked out. I'm still mm-hmm. here to talk of about course, it. Of course, you're so. still here. You're here to talk about it. You're here to make mm-hmm. this wonderful dish that you Absolutely. made for us tonight. And so, but you have had the the privilege of cooking for quite a few people. I had 
who who have been some of the people in the area that you cook for and beyond? Because I know it, it spans way past the Washington metro area. Yeah. I cook for Representative John Lewis. Wow. You know, the civil rights activist. Yes. That um, had to be an amazing oh, experience. Well, and he's an amazing guy. Yes. Who yes. has a very particular palate. Mm, kind okay. of, you know, like for older people, you know, mm -hmm. they like things specific. I want meatloaf with ketchup on top. And, you know, I can't even remember last time I made meatloaf prior to making right. it for them. Um, awesome, though. Good guy. Mm -hmm. um, the Washington Redskins cheerleaders. Okay. Some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, but they're. Okay. It's my favorite team. <laughs> favorite team. <laughs> favorite team, okay. Correct that. <laughs> All right, so you've talked about a lot of the people that you've cooked for, but and you also talked about the fact that you go to the grocery store every single day, every which I'm day. super impressed by that. Yeah. Because I go quite often, but I haven't gotten to the point where I go every day. But where ha what's been the furthest amount, or furthest um, that you've traveled, and for what ingredient? So I took a trip to Puerto Rico with my family and friends, and I came across this herb called culantro. Oh. It's kind of like cilantro, yeah. but just a little more powerful. The leaf is a lot bigger. The taste is a lot more powerful. So with that, I was able to find that LA International over in Virginia, Springfield. Oh, wow. So okay. they have that, and I utilize that more so than what kind of dish? <clears throat> what kind of dish do you use that for? Mm, pico de gallo. Oh, okay. Guacamole, tacos. Nice. Um, as crazy as it sounds, I like to put it on top of my shrimp and grits. Really? Oh, I, I wish we had some today. You know. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds yeah. really cool though. Mm -hmm. So so what is your favorite dish? I mean, you make a lot of food for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I'm sure their requests are numerous. What is your favorite dish? I like stuffed chicken breast. Really? I do. Okay. You know why? Because you can take the chicken breast and you can get your veggies at the same time mm -hmm. inside. So I like to stuff mine with kale, yeah. Tuscan kale. Okay. A little bit of cream cheese. A little bit of garlic, salt and pepper, special seasoning. Okay. Um, There's always a, a chef yeah. has, always has his own special yes. seasoning. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, and you're not going to tell us what that is? No, it is. It's 11 <laughs> different spices, though. Oh, and I, I have love it already that. prepared. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I've been noticing throughout the evening that you have this really unique um, tattoo on. I so, do. can you tell us a little bit about that and the significance? So, I was born and raised in church. Okay. My mother's first lady and my father was a pastor. Awesome. So, I'm a PK too. Yeah. PK's unite. You already know how we are. Yes. Yeah. It ain't true. The good guy. <laughs> so, um, this one right here mm -hmm. is Psalms 40, verses 1 and 2. Mm, okay. And then I also have Philippians 4 13 right here on the inside of my bicep. Nice. So, these right here I keep with me at all yeah. times. Two very interesting mm -hmm. scriptures and two very good scriptures. I love that. Absolutely. All right. Well, we have had. Such an awesome conversation, but I'm telling you right now, I'm ready to eat. I don't know about you. Hey, I'm ready to play. Oh, well, well, let's do this. Oh. <laughs>
as simple of a dish though. It's actually a Cajun shrimp and grits. Mm -hmm. So you have heavy cream, you have milk, you have Parmesan cheese, you have all kinds of good stuff in there. So, but you're gonna plate it now and, and I'm gonna taste in just a few minutes. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these grits. How I mm -hmm. made them was with butter, boiling water. Mm -hmm. And So it's a regular way to make grits. Correct. Wa Seasoning boil the water. Mm -hmm. Little sea salt, pepper, Obey, mm -hmm. special seasoning. Oh. And you continue to make it until it becomes the desired thickness. You don't right. want it to be too, you know, too chunky. Too, right. Or too runny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you just want it to be just right. And I think these are just right. They look amazing. So. Yes. We're going to try to keep it nice mm -hmm. And now we go to the actual shrimp grits. <clears throat> so with the shrimp and grits, you pan sear the shrimp, mm -hmm. bell peppers, onions, then you have the Cajun sauce, which is heavy whipping cream, a little bit of light seasoning, garlic, Parmesan cheese. And all of that can be done right, in, or was really done right in the pan. Exactly. Because a lot of times I think for me personally, I think I'm, I have to make the cream sauce separate from the shrimp, but you did yeah. everything all in the pan. All in one pan, pan. correct. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you take a generous amount. Yes, generous Generous. Amount. So you take, <laughs> You make sure you just get just the shrimp. Yes. I'm gonna show you what you do after that. Now this is sexy. <clears throat> we were so, talking about sexy food earlier. Mm -hmm. Here so we this, go. So this is pescatarian, you know, desired, but you can always add chicken sausage, mm -hmm. turkey sausage, pork. Okay. Whatever you like. So. I like the idea of that. So now that we got the shrimp already on the plate, mm -hmm. got sauce. Look at you. You can add as much sauce as you like. Oh, that looks amazing. Yes. So, that, after that, you can finish it. Okay. Top off. A little Parmesan cheese. A little cheese. more Parmesan. And, last but not least, scallions. You gotta have those. Mm. Mm. Yes. Mm. Now, I'm gonna put some of this in my sauce. Alright, so you it's made ready. the food, I'll make the drinks, but we're gonna go back to the table and taste this. Okay. Alright? Sounds good. So we'll be right back on Love Dish where we get a chance to actually taste the shrimp and grits. We'll be right I'm K.S. Lewis, and as you can see, we've plated our meal. We've plated our Cajun shrimp and grits. It looks wonderful. I can't wait to taste it. <laughs> um, but so we've talked about a lot of different things. We've talked about your journey to entrepreneurship. We've talked about healthy eating. Um, we've even talked about when you were single and dating and making sexy meals. But I wonder what would be, so you have a lot of experience. What would be three main things that you would tell someone who's looking to, you know, journey into the role of entrepreneurship? So, off break, I would tell them that once you jump in, you have to know that you're going to be in this for the long haul. Okay. So, knowing that, you know, once I am here to provide a service to X, Y, and Z, people depend on me. So, <clears throat> if I said today, I don't want to cook anymore, you know, there's people who you know, I've already provided catering services for right. meal prep, you know, and then, you know, you just want to always be able to provide from beginning to end. So you, I guess, retire in a sense. Always maintain the level of professionalism, knowing that what you put out in the world, you know, people are receptive of those things. Right. You can't say certain things. You can't offend certain people. Right. You know, no matter how, how you may feel about certain things. That's times. true. Because people know. will bring <clears throat> things out of you that you didn't mm -hmm. even know existed. Right. <laughs> so I can't just go on my page and start talking about mm -hmm. politics and certain things because a client of mine may want to hire me for a specific service, but just because they have a certain political view doesn't mean that, oh, I can't serve them, you know, and you may chase off the wrong person. So you have to keep your, kind of keep your opinions to yourself. Um, also, when you figure out exactly what you're doing, you have to <clears throat> you have to know exactly, you know, what sets you apart from everyone else. So, me being a young black chef in Washington, D.C., yeah, there's plenty of other ones, but what makes me different from them? You know, 
know, so you have to have your own identity. And what does make you different from them? Mm. I, I know a lot of them, and they're a lot of good guys, yeah. but what I would say makes me different is how I present myself, you know. Um, and we can leave that right there. Okay, we'll leave it right there. <laughs> so, but that's key. Yeah. That's key. Mm-hmm. So. Because awesome. I, yeah. <laughs> And you know, and that's, I think that's the world for, that's everyone's world, you know, mm-hmm. it's all about the way you present yourself. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that are doing similar things mm-hmm. to what I'm even doing, you know, and we're both authors, so there's a lot of writers out here, mm-hmm. but the difference, like you said, is how you present yourself Correct. and what you choose to be, um, you know, who you are mm-hmm. and how and how you represent who you are to other people, so I can right. really appreciate that. Right. So I have one last question, and I ask this of every guest that comes on the show. Now, we've talked about dating, we've talked about our work lives, we've talked about writing, and through all of that, there has to be some type of level of commitment and level of love that goes into that. So what is your greatest hope for love? My greatest hope for love, as you know, I have a three-year-old daughter, Yes. and I love her with all my heart. My greatest hope is that she'll find a man who will treat her the way I treat my wife. And I say that in a sense that in the past, as a single man, I wasn't always the best man, you know, to women, you know. So, you know, if a guy treats her how a lot of the women I treated, I'd be a little upset, you know. So... That's why I say I hope that no one does her how I did women when I was younger. Yeah. Well, you turned into a wonderful example them. for her to see, so Absolutely. you don't have to worry about that. That's awesome. I love that. So, oh, thank you for that. Let's tell everybody how they can keep in contact with you, how they can continue to see what you're doing, and how they can reach you. So, they can go to my website, which is www.chefanthonyevents.com. Okay. Instagram and Twitter is Chef Anthony DC. And that's how you can get in contact with me. Okay. Email address and everything is on there. So everything is at Chef Anthony DC. And I, I know we got to taste this food, but I just want to say again, thank you so much for coming on the and show. I so me. appreciate it. it. Yes, I so appreciate you coming. I had a lot of fun with you this evening. Thank you. If you would like to try out this recipe, just look below. And once you do, please make a comment and make sure that you're subscribed to the show so you can always see what's happening with Love Dish. We'll be back next week, but for right now, we're gonna get into these Cajun shrimp and grits. I'm ready to. I'm I'm gonna tell you right now, but you're not gonna you gotta eat with me now. Come on, no problem. Now you know from the south, so grits are one of my favorite things to eat. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, I can see why this was a date night yeah. recipe. This is good stuff. Mm-hmm. See you next week. Uh-huh.